This is about the voice. All of us have a voice within us. You know, I can remember many times in my life that, uh, you know, right after gotten married that, uh, well, the voices have always been there, you know, good voices. Uh, one particular time, uh, I was working, I was in uh, Pine Valley working on uh, the Bull Taco. And it was real hot, it's on that road up to the dump, and you have to walk about a mile down to the edge of this big field, and this gigantic field, and then there's a store where you can buy an ice cream cone or whatever in Pine Valley. And I'm working away on the Bull Taco, and I get more more like a vision than a voice. I might see my daughter, you know, she's about four years old or less, and they're trudging it halfway and the heat's just and it's just like daddy daddy come get me so I dropped what I was doing and I ran down there I drove down to the as far as I could drive because of the fence and then walked out and I met him halfway in the middle of the field and I could just see she just uh, you know I don't know what heat exposure back in those days we didn't think much about it but you know, it was a good thing that I went down there and brought him back to the house and, and cooled him off. You know, the voice helped out there. So, start to, see, when I was a, uh, got a construction, oh, you know, in this 1969, but up in about 94, got into a good company and I became a safety coordinator. And a lot of times, my, my, um, you know, they hear, every Monday they hear a uh, safety story, so I have to come up with a lot of things. And a lot of times I use the voice, you know, because we've always got that voice. And every time we have a safety meeting, I could ask somebody, to, uh, did the voice ever, did you ever have the voice, you know, say something to you and you didn't obey it and, and you paid for it. And the one guy was sitting there and he had a big bandage on his finger. And, and just that day, or the day before, he'd, he was over doing something, and the voice said, don't put your finger in there, and he did. Off he goes, a bunch of stitches. So we all have this voice talking to us. Now, I want to start with one that started back in the uh, late, early, mid-60s, the late-60s. My buddy, Calvin, he's, uh, he stalks drywall. He's living up in Riverside. So between Riverside and Palm Desert down there somewhere is a big old gigantic yard, you know, where the train tracks go. Big cement, I mean concrete. It's almost like an airport, just hundreds of square feet, square yards, football fields of just nothing but places to pull the trains off. And, and you come off the freeway and you get on a little side road and then you pull and there's two or three hundred yards two or three hundred football fields over to where all the stuff's being unloaded and he was going over to get a bunch of drywall and about halfway is this cardboard box and he could tell it was empty by the flaps on the end he's, a, he's gonna smash it so he's dry wrong and, and something the boy says don't so he swerves and he's driving over looking for the his load of drywall he's gonna load and he looks in the rearview mirror two little kids crawled out of that box the voice, we got to listen to that voice. That voice is something else. It tells us of all kinds of things that, you know, there's probably some voices telling some people some bad things, but just for the sake of you and I, and uh, listen to that voice. That voice knows what it's doing. Uh, so there was, you know, like one time I was taking pots out, they're outgrowing their, they're outgrowing their pot, I put them into a bigger pot and, and poking the dirt down and, my car's out in the driveway and I'm patting the dirt all down and then I go out to the car and it's time for dinner and I'm called in. And I'm going back to the house and it was just one little section about this wide. It just needed one more little poke down the dirt. And the boy said, put your gloves on. And so I reasoned it out. Uh, I, I'm just going to be dinner's on the table. I got to go in there. I, I'm, I'm just going to put this. There's a piece of glass down in there and just tore my fingers. I had to go right straight to the car and 
So of course I didn't get the dinner for three or four hours, you know, later. And now here's a really, really one. It happened right across the street from where I'm standing. This is back in the 60s. Uh, the Go-Go Girls are just starting. Down on uh, Harbor, Harbor uh, Drive, there was a place called the, um, anyway, I forget the name of it, but uh, you know, the Go-Go, this Go-Go dancing had just started. And I'm across, I live in across the street at the time. I'm out in the shed working. My wife had bought this old beat up oak table. Beautiful piece now, we've been eating off of it for 50 years. And um, and a voice says, uh, go out in the street. So I've learned by now, you know, even that 50, 60 years ago, not with all this other stuff. And so I go to the, uh, gate you know i come out of the shed walk down the side and i get the gate and i look down the street and i don't see nothing and i turn around i get about 20 feet the voice again go out in the street so this time i went through the gate and i went out in the street and i looked that way and i looked that way and I... so i head around going back to the get through the gate about halfway down then Go out in the street. So I go back out in the street, and this time I walk a little bit this way. And I walk, and as I start walking that way, I start to hear something. I walk a little farther, and I can tell there's a car running in this garage. It's about two or three houses down from here. Put me in on this house and a half or whatever part. I couldn't hear it from the shed, so there's no way in the world I could. My, subconscious mind would be telling me something's going wrong. This voice is telling me someone's trying to commit suicide. And so I run out there and I knock on the door for the babysitter or who's ever there. And it's a babysitter and there's someone trying to commit garage, commit suicide in your garage. We go out there and throw the door open and drag her out and get, get, sit her down and you know, she, we were just in time. And meanwhile, the kid had called the cops, and so we were sitting there when the police come, and they, are, you know, they're giving their advice of what to do. But she's fine and dandy now. So when the police leave, and we just talk to her, and it was, you know, a couple of days later, I asked her. It was all over a, a boyfriend breaking up with her. Here she is. She has a little kid. Now, how did that voice know someone was, you know? 50 yards away committing suicide. You know, you hear that voice all the time. That voice is always telling us things. So we gotta listen to the voice. Pay attention to the voice.